Hey, hey, it's that time again, another Let's Build. And this one's gonna be, of course, using Ruby on Rails, but we're gonna be focusing on multi-tenancy in Rails. And that concept is way too easy with this a gem called Apartment we'll be using. And the idea is that you'll have different schemas associated with different records. So in our case, it will be a uh, workout tracker app and then each space or schema is going to have its own design designated workouts and then their corresponding exercises so we're going to be doing things such as nested attributes in rails uh, a little bit of Vue.js for some sugar and some basically just hashing out this concept of subdomains and also making that work on a local host which is kind of a pain so you might see my url at the moment it's lvh.me Someone actually registered that domain and made it point to the local host, so 127.0.0.1. And it's super useful for this purpose because when you do need to create a subdomain-based app, you need a way to query that and then make sure that user or whoever you're doing, say an account or a user, is tied to the specific subdomain. So the way this works is a little hacky at first, but the way I wired it up, at least for examples purposes, is to sign up a new user. Once they create an account, we'll just call this John Smith. So if you sign up at this point, you'll be actually redirected to that URL, which is awesome. And then you're given the space to add your all your workouts if you have them. Um, that should probably dynamically display if there's none. But I ran out of time on this, so bear with me. Essentially, you can create a workout in this space. You're given your workout title can choose a date, let's just say chest. I'm using the built-in date picker on this app and then exercise name, I don't know, chest bench press. Sets, let's say five. And the weight here, if you think about nested attributes, the weight could probably be, um, if we're thinking even further, the exercise could be an, an have a nested attribute as well. So we could have each set say how many reps you had plus the weight to make this even more advanced but i opted to forgo that for this tutorial just because it's a little more than we needed to really bite out of this concept its focus is mainly multi-tenancy but i wanted to do some realistic examples just to show you what you'd actually do with some some sort of app and how you can start working with Vue.js and stuff like that so i'm still green on it myself but i'm learning and it's it's a pretty cool little framework so say 200 and Here's where view comes in. I can add these nested and it's just real time adding these attributes. So, um, I don't know, flies, I think I spelled that right. I don't know. So let's say five sets of 80, I don't know. And we'll add that exercise. If you want to add more, you can go as many as you want. We'd save that workout. We're given the chest workout with the exercises, the corresponding sets and the weight. This is obviously plain Jane example but it's showing you how that stuff works under the hood. We still have device working everything, but you notice it is on our subdomain, so that's pretty nifty. And this is all scoped to that subdomain, so that's what I wanted to kind of at least figure out on my own and then show you guys as well, because it's just a cool concept that a lot of apps use, like Harvest Time Tracking. I think FreshBooks uses it, and Basecamp did for a while. I don't know that they're still using it, but it is something that I've seen in the wild and it makes sense for the sake of scoping things out um, but if we dig into the code just to show you some examples of how this is actually running go to my database and you'll notice all these different schemas or not the schemas but actual databases and this is per tenant so the way apartment works is it grabs all of these accounts each time you create an account it's going to be scoped to that particular user so we have our root development one that we're gonna use. And then I created these other accounts that you see like Affinicast, Example, Smitty, Test, WebCrunch, all those. And that was just me testing. So each new account that you sign up with has its own SQLite database. So a prerequisite of that is, not even a prerequisite, but a something to note is SQLite in the wild does not really do well with this kind of concept for local development and just testing out an idea, this is great, but I would definitely recommend PostgreSQL, SQL, <laughs> in the wild, Heroku, 
actually makes you use that and it's definitely wise because it supports the schema scaffolding and stuff like that a lot better and you can do multi-threaded processing and stuff like that so you'll see as we go there's some hiccups that i kind of worked through on the way just to get to where we are in the app but it's just to show by example so definitely take this with a grain of salt but also just know that you can expand on any of these topics that i'm covering and as well as the interface all those things it's just very plain jane obviously but the general idea is there basically when you sign in as a new user sign up you're re redirected to your subdomain and that's where your stuff lives so from then on you just access that directly and so forth so you can always sign up another user um, and sign in on your existing account too so that is just a quick walkthrough of the app i'm sure i'm forgetting something in this video but wanted to introduce it and then show you step by step how to build this so the next videos will kick things off no pun intended with my kickoff gym template or whatever you want to call it and i'll scaffold an app with that and then we'll start to use things like webpacker as well as this apartment gym to make this thing really really work the way we want it to so some of it's a little complicated and it's probably over a beginner's head um, this is stuff that's it's dealing with domains and dns and all that stuff so it's it's not exactly easy to you know understand but it does make this gem does make everything way easier to figure out and scope your app uh, and scale it pretty quickly so without further ado the next video will be getting the project set up and then after that we'll start probably working on the logic and then later the views and then getting into some Vue.js to kind of make things a little more streamlined so i'll see you in the next video hope you dig this and if you uh, like these series feel free to subscribe it, it let me know that you want me to keep going and all those things uh yeah that's it all right i'll see you in the next video